Welcome to our talk, and thanks for coming. She is Amanda Hinsman Dominguez in Chicago, where she is the organizer of the Colin User Group. And this is Raquel Carmena. She's from Spain, and together we work at 47 Degrees. Thank you, Amanda. Yeah, thank you. You are awesome. <laughs> so, let's start. Let me tell you a short story. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, Arrow Library was war. Who of you are familiar with Arrow Library? Woohoo! <laughs> Perfect, <laughs> thank you. Okay, but don't worry, because it's not necessary to be familiar with Arrow Library for this talk. For those who are not familiar with Arrow Library, it's a functional companion to the Kotlin standard library. And it seems a library is the common way to add more functional capabilities to a programming language. Let's see some examples. Cats library for Scala, Bow library for Swift, Babber for Java. However, we wanted to add more ergonomic features to the language that don't exist in Kotlin or the standard library and that require to reach out the Kotlin compiler. Let's think. We use the Kotlin compiler to compile the source code in order to get the bytecode. And the Kotlin compiler doesn't transpile Java code, as some people think. It's a compiler. And at the beginning, with Arrow, we were focused on the source code. What if we shot the arrow to another direction? What if we shot the arrow to the calling compiler? So, it was the time to contact the calling community to get more knowledge about it. But how? So, Kotlin provides several sources of contact to follow one of the principles of the pragmatic evolution, which is to stay in a constant feedback loop with the users. Let's see. Sources of contact. Maybe the most known is the Kotlin Lang Slack, right? Who of you are in the Slack? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> Very useful, right? Besides the Slack, there is a Kotlin forum for discussions. an issue tracker, and a way to contribute to the language. That's KEEP. It means Kotlin evolution and enhancement process. It's hosted in GitHub, and it holds proposals for the language. Its proposal as, as, are estimated as uh, pull requests, and they are also known as KIPs, just as KIPs. And new KIPs, uh, or some KIPs, have their own repository for a specification and discussions. So, here we go. We created this pull request to propose adding compiled and extension interfaces in the same way as uh, protocol extension in Swift. And at the same time, we realized that the entire community was heavily dependent of some compiler plugins like Android extensions, uh, serialization, all open, 
all of them companions to the Kotlin compiler because they require more advanced features. But in, it's not just about creating a pull request. It's really important to receive feedback. And we receive a huge amount of feedback. Look at the numbers. More than 300 messages, 85 commits, 57 participants, 18 reviewers. Amazing. Thank you. Do you want to know more about it? OK, so before explaining what we have done for the calling compiler, we are going to show you how the calling compiler works. Let's see. Firstly, we write some code. And the calling compiler reads that code and models its structure into a tree, also known as the AST, Abstract Syntax Tree. And that tree is compatible with JBrand's PSI, which is used in the IDE. During analysis, that tree gets transformed into another tree, a tree of descriptors, which have a reference to the original AST element. OK, before, those descriptors are very useful during the code generation phase to render the code, and also they are useful for building ID tooling, OK? So during resolution, the code is type check, and including some data flow management, like calling contracts or generic constraints. If the calling compiler reads this point, the source code will move to code generation. And during the code generation phase, we will get the bytecode to be run in any of the available platforms. And everything is done. And now, we are going to explain you how we can add <laughs> <laughs> more features to the calling compiler through metaprogramming with AeroMeta. Thank you, Raquel. The Kotlin compiler is always evolving. With different APIs, toolings, and plugins available, there are so many ways that uh, there, the, the compiler is always growing. And I want to say that Arameta is just one means for Kotliners to be able to explore creative innovations for the language. And we do this by providing a DSL that removes the surface complexity for subscribing to different phases in the Kotlin compiler. So, my mate Raquel did an excellent job explaining how the different phases of the compiler can be uh, go, like gone through in its entirety. But let's take a look at it again with Arameta. So we start with uh, Arameta intercepting the AST phase and its resulting models. The quote and template system gives the ability for transformations uh, specifically to the code. So we're thinking about code generation, static analysis, any kind of tree transformation you can think of. If you've worked with IntelliJ IDEA, you might be familiar with its features, such as warning messages, uh, you know, pop-ups. And the thing about that is that those features require that compiler plugins provide a special kind of model called synthetic descriptors. Synthetic descriptors contains information like names, Kotlin types, and everything that IntelliJ IDEA needs in order to be able to provide those features that are specific to Kotlin. So the thing about that is 
when you're writing a compiler plugin, it is the responsibility of the creator to basically manage that synthetic resolution. But Arameta does that for you, so you don't have to. OK. We, uh, I made a little bit of a lofty claim that Arameta has the ability to intercept and subscribe to all phases. I stand by what I said. And this includes code generation. So for folks that are less familiar with Kotlin compilers, uh, when we're talking about code generation, we're actually talking about two things. We're talking about IR and ASM. ASM is a library that generates bytecode for the JVM. IR, or intermediate representation, is basically a textual tree that's used to generate bytecode for all other available backends for the Kotlin compiler. So the Kotlin compiler allows you to use one or the either. Arameta provides a user-friendly DSL so that you have the ability to use either. And uh, this is quite wonderful. So, We've uh, gone through the compilation process successfully, and we've shown how Arameta is able to work with all those phases. Thank you, Amanda. And now, let's see some features in detail. We are using Arometa to build plugins for Aero, but you can create your own plugins as well with Arometa. For example, we can create a plugin to make transformations. Let's see. The user writes some code. And there is a hello world function, which is not implemented. Then the compiler plugin intercepts that code and applies on the transformation. When the code is compiled, includes all the uh, changes, all the transformations. And finally, when the code is executed, the result will show the successful interception of the AST tree, uh, abstract syntax tree. Let's see more things. OK, so we showed a very, very simple example of a Hello World plugin. But Arameta is far more than just writing simple plugins. Arameta is also a container that has the ability to bundle multiple plugins together. This is pretty cool, because you have the ability to switch out plugins or combine however many you like. You can go crazy. Uh, actually, I want to ask the audience a question. Uh, how many people in here has written a Gradle compi or a compiler plugin? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Cool. Uh, how many people have tried to write a compiler plugin? Okay, I mean, I've tried. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I, before Arameta, I've tried uh, a couple times and failed, failed miserably every time. Uh, but seriously, Arameta is going to change the game at how we write plugins. And I think it's totally OK if you've never done it before, because you will not believe how it looks. So you can wrap AST elements with transformable scopes, which may go back and forth between the models of meta and PSI. And what we're looking at here is a meta extension plugin that 47 Degrees wrote specifically for our Aero Core library called the Comprehensions plugin. Within meta, you have the ability to subscribe to multiple extension phases in the Kotlin compiler, including Arameta's quote system. So a quote offers a high-level DSL that basically allows you the ability to transform the code that you're trying to grab. And you can also find like matching predicates for it. So what we're looking at is a dot qualified expression. But we're not looking for any kind of dot qualified expression. What we're concerned about is a dot qualified expression that also happens to contain an FX block. What happens when we find such a thing? 
Uh, right, so when we find such a dot qualified expression that also happens to have uh, uh, an FX block, we have the ability to apply any kind of transformation to the underlying tree uh, that is intercepted and made available by the Kotlin compiler. And what we're doing, for example, in this case, is we're taking the original declaration and we're, we're replacing it with whatever two-flat map generates as a new declaration. And of course, if we're, uh, as a coder, you probably are wondering, well, what is two-flat map? So we'll do the command click fig figuratively. And uh, this actually shows one of Arameta's most important features called the template DSL. The template DSL is pretty great because it allows you to create these new declarations without necessarily having to preserve or manage the type information yourself. And this is great because basically uh, in the past, we would be forced to work with strings during code generation. So when we're looking at uh, this new declaration, you'll notice that we're actually able to directly access the properties of the AST elements uh, without having to parse that information ourselves. And that's it. That's literally all there is. It's quite literally four steps. Unbelievable. And I wanted to show one more thing because not only do we have a quote and template system, uh, quote and template DSL, but we also have a, a compiler testing DSL available so that you're able to test your plugins. And uh, I have to say that I've been lucky to try it out myself, and it was an incredibly enjoyable experience. And I'm blown away by the fact that we have the ability to do a couple things. So we worked with uh, Tilo Schwartz, uh, compiler testing library in order to create a super friendly user DSL. And you have the ability to do things like, is uh, what you're writing in your compiler compiling at all? Uh, also, you have the ability to validate analysis. You probably want to make sure that uh, what you think you're grabbing is what, what you are grabbing. And uh, of course, uh, you actually have the ability to upload your bytecode and check that it's working as intended. So there's a couple different places where you can check within the different phases of the Kotlin compiler to validate that what you're doing is working. Okay. Thank you, Amanda. OK, so let's see uh, another example of plugin. Uh, sometimes uh, we need to have more than two values. For example, uh, we need a value in case everything is working as, uh, OK and properly, and another value in case there is a failure. For example, uh, let's think about result in Kotlin. With result in Kotlin, we can store in a variable a value of any type in case everything is working uh, properly, or maybe we can store an exception in case of failure. Another related example is uh, either from arrow. Uh, With e either, in the same way, we can have two different values, the right part and the left part. And with the right part, we store the value in case everything is working OK. And with the left part, we are storing the value in case there is uh, a failure. And in this case, uh, it's a value for, uh, from the right part of the left part of any, of any type. So what if we want to have more than two values? What if we want to have more than two choices? Or what if we don't, have, uh, or we don't want to have a special meaning for every single value? So with Aerometa, we created a plugin to define or to be able to uh, define uh, union types. And let's see a very simple example. We have a variable, and that variable can have a value. It's an apple or an orange, OK? So sometimes that variable uh, store an apple, and other times an orange. So 
with this plugin, we can write code in this way. We have a variable, an apple or orange, which is a union to, in which uh, we specify that can store a value of a type apple or orange. So in the first line, we are assigning an apple, and it's OK. Then an orange, and it's OK as well. But maybe the most important thing is the security. In case we assign a value uh, from another type, not neither uh, apple nor orange, for example, an strawberry, and we will get an error. OK, so in this way, with union2, we don't have a special meaning, just two different values and no special meaning. But what if we want to have more than two values, two choices, for example, three, four? So the plugin also provides union three, union four, okay? And for all the features that we have seen until now, all you need to do to get them into your project is to use the Arrow Meta Gradle plugin. But, Amanda, what about the IntelliIdea? idea? What about it? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I know what's about it. <laughs> so, everything we've been talking about right up to this point uh, has been compiler plugins. But, Arrow Meta is looking to bring more than just that. We're looking to bring uh, an improved user experience right to the IDE. So let's take a look at uh, an example. Uh, earlier, if you were paying attention, uh, we were talking about the comprehensions plugin. And what we're looking at right now is the IDE complement of the plugin. And you'll see that there's little icons to the side and some helpful messages for the user. And uh, this is pretty uh, significant for us because what's great about this comprehensions plugin and what you're looking at is that this actually applies to any kind of valid flat map data type. So we're talking about more than just Arrow IO. We're talking about Kotlin collection APIs. We're talking about uh, RxJava. We're talking about any reactive things, anything with flat maps. So this can work across the board. Kind of, a, kind of a neat thing, but let's take a look at another example. Uh, so here, we're looking at uh, some pr programming that is focused on whether what you're programming is pure or impure. And you'll see that we have some <laughs> custom uh, messaging for that. But I think what's incredibly significant about this and what is significant for us at 47 is that we are so excited that we have the opportunity to bring functional programming to you, the developer, like right in your editor. You don't have to go to your, the website to like check for the documentation. Uh, we're really hoping that for us, we can bring more of an interactive experience for functional programming for folks. Thank you. And now I have an important message for you. Hey. Are you guys paying attention? Yes. Are you awake? OK, OK, good. I just had to make sure. OK, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. <laughs> now I think they are paying attention. I think they're <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So Arrow is a functional companion to the Kotlin standard library. And like Arrow, Arrow Meta, is a functional companion to the Kotlin compiler. Both of them, Arrow and Arrow Meta, follow the same principle, which is any feature from Arrow, Arrow Meta, or any of the plugins, which is adopted by the Kotlin language, will be removed from Arrow. Arrow Meta, it's just a way to complement the Kotlin compiler and to open a window to create prototypes and to explore what's possible to do with it. Thank you. Of course. 
for your attention. Thank you. <laughs> I have chills. This uh, actually brings us kind of to our full story, um, especially in regards to keeps. It, Arameta would have not been born had it been for the existence of Keep 87. And I hope that f folks uh, maybe start looking at Arameta as a way to enhance the Keep process. And, uh, you know, maybe more than that, maybe you might be interested in writing a plugin for your own library, or maybe a library you really, really love, and there's a feature you wish it had, and no one really quite got to it yet. But I think there's so many different possibilities for it. And here's the thing, 47 degrees, uh, we're really excited because we're literally on standby. And if you're interested in writing your own plugin, we're, we're ready to help out. Uh, so speaking of which, uh, thank you so much to the Kotlin community. Uh, there was a whole lot of conversations uh, to be had with the Arameta Slack channel, the compiler channel, and the Lang proposal channel. Uh, we mostly reside in the Arameta channel. So if you have any ideas or have any questions, I mean, literally pop up and we'll, we'll uh, take some time to help. Uh, also, we've been having kind of these like weekly ad hoc on demand, uh, you know, Google Hangouts or something. And we love like telling people more about how the compiler works. Uh, we love telling people more about our Arameta system. And it's been quite an amazing experience. So we've been doing that uh, as people have been asking. And thank you, uh, 47 Degrees, for pushing and sponsoring the development of Aero and Aero Meta. And 47 Degrees is also sponsoring Colin Conf. Uh, we have a booth here, the number eight. So please be sure to stop by to say hello. And we will be very happy to answer questions from Aero, Aero Meta, or 47 Degrees. Ah, yes, and of course, thank you to the people that made uh, Kotlin and IntelliJ. Thank you, JetBrains, so much. Um, JetBrains have been incredibly supportive with this whole process. They've been awesome, answering lots of questions we've had about the Kotlin compiler, giving suggestions, and we're just so thankful uh, that we're in a community like this. And thanks to all the people uh, who are bootstrapping Aero Meta and makes Aero possible. More than 150 contributors from all over the world. And not only Amanda and me are here, but also more people from the community, as Raul Raja and Simon Bergen. Uh, they are here as well in order to um, answer questions as well with us. And <laughs> say hello. <laughs> And Aero is an inclusive community where everybody is welcome. So join us. Join us. And last but not least. Thank you for sitting in this room and listening to us today. But also keep insisting. Yeah, and please remember, remember to vote. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>